how to dodge and burn in Luminar Neo. So you might be watching this saying, but Anthony, there isn't a dodge and burn tool inside Luminar Neo. And you would be right. However, I need to let you in on a little secret. Photoshop has a dedicated dodge and burn tool, but the pros, we don't use it. And the reason is there's better methods to achieve a dodge and burn result. And the great news for Luminar Neo users is we can use those same techniques inside Luminar Neo. Just really quickly, for those of you who don't know, dodge and burn is just a method for brightening and darkening specific areas of our photo so that we're able to better sculpt the three dimensional form in what is ultimately a two dimensional medium. My goal in this video isn't for a perfect result by any means. I'm gonna be pretty rough and ready. I just want to demonstrate the technique techniques of how we can actually get a dodge and burn effect using these techniques. So let's get into the first one, which is a photograph of my daughter outside in our garden. We have a little bit of natural light that I've augmented just with a strobe off to our right over here. And the purpose of that strobe is just to give us a bit of sculpting to the form. We want three dimensionality, but it still just feels a little bit flat and that's where dodge and burn comes in. So for the first technique, what we're gonna do is come over to the layers and we're gonna load two new instances of the same photo over the top. So I've clicked on one and this first instance is going to be our burn layer. This is the one that's going to darken down the areas we want to darken. And so all I'm going to do is crank the opacity all the way to 100 and I'm going to come into the blending options and I'm going to go for multiply and straight away that's going to darken everything down but obviously we just want to paint in the areas that we feel artistically should be darker and that's already just a little bit too dark I don't want to push things that far and so I'm just push that opacity about 75% that's fine so we're going to come to masking and we're going to fill the mask now currently, if I show the mask, none of it's active, it's a full mask. So what we want to do is actually invert that mask and now that layer that we've applied, this one right here, that is effectively hidden. And so now what we can do is come into our brush tool and we're free to paint that effect in wherever we want. Okay, so with this first darken layer, which is gonna be our burn one, I'm just gonna start painting in areas that I feel should be a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do as I paint this in is I'm just paying attention to where that light is coming from over on this right hand side and then areas that I feel should be a little bit darker, i.e. in shadow, I'm just gonna darken those down. Currently all we see is the mask itself and there's pros and cons to that. This is actually not my favorite method that we're doing at the moment, but the benefit to doing it this way is we can see exactly where we're painting and which areas are gonna get darker. So what I'm gonna do now is just close out of the masking section just by clicking on properties and then all of a sudden we have that darkening effect applied. So if we come over to this effect, right click and we go hide layer, it's gone. This is our original. I'll right click on it again and we'll choose show layer and there you go. So this layer is serving us as a burn layer. It's darkening down the areas where we're painting it. What about dodging? What about brightening areas up? Well, we can take the same approach by coming over to the layers, selecting that image once again. Luminar is going to load it in and this time what we want to do is come over to the blend options and in the drop down box this time we're going to choose screen which is going to brighten up all of those pixels and I'm going to crank the opacity on this one all the way to 100 and you can see that we're getting close to blowing out on our skin but we haven't peaked above white yet and that's exactly what we want so now we can do exactly what we did before and so I'm going to come into the masking section and all I want to do is invert the mask that we currently have there and that's just going to hide everything everything, enabling us to once again come into our brush and we can paint this effect in where we want it. So I'm using the left and right mouse keys on my keyboard just to control the size of the brush and all I'm going to do is just paint pretty roughly and I'm doing this with my mouse just to show you guys that it's pretty easy to do even with a mouse and I'm just looking for those areas on her face that are pointing towards the light and I just want to increase the brightness level on those. I'm gonna do the same on her shoulder here and I'm gonna be pretty heavy handed with this. We're at 31% at the moment and what I like to do is just build the effect up pretty strongly and then I can come in with the opposite of this by going to the erase tool and just taking it away from areas where I may have just gone a little heavy handed. And so all I'm doing when I'm painting these highlights in is looking for areas that I want to bring attention to and looking for areas that I want to bring out a little more just to give that rich three dimensional form to it. So I'm painting over her hair there just to bring out that. If we want to, we can zoom into the eyes and I'm just doing that with a scroll wheel on my mouse. And then literally we can just paint over the eyes like this. And I like to do a little circle around the iris as well. So we can do that and that works out nicely for brightening the eyes. 
And as I say, I've been really rough and ready with this and I may just want to now come in with the erase tool and take it away because we don't want to give her demon eyes like that. Might want to take just a little bit off the forehead there as well. Do a little swipe across the eyes. Just bring those back into the realms of normality just a little bit. And her shoulders probably just popping just a little bit too much there. And once you've finished painting in your dodge effect, what you can do is either hide the layer and show it just to see what you've done. Or what I prefer to do is actually come to the opacity slider, take it away, ease it in. And by toggling that left and right, you can see exactly what your effect has done. And we can toggle back and forth between our lighter and our darker layer and we can come in and make adjustments if we want to so for example i can jump back into the brush tool um, let's crank the strength up a little bit and let's say that i just want to put a darkening vignette around the edges well first of all that's not going to work because i'm in the arrays tool and we can just press x on the keyboard and that's going to switch between the paintbrush and the arrays tool and now i can just paint around the edge here let go and now we've darkened down the background nicely. So let's suppose we're happy with that. Let's just close the layer properties down and then we can click the backslash key on our keyboard. That allows us to see our before, let go. This is our after, so before, and after so there you go there's our first method for dodge and burn this next method that i'm going to share with you it's actually my favorite and it has several advantages over this technique that i've just shown you the main one being we're going to see our brush strokes update on the photo in real time so let's take a look at that one just like last time, the only real editing we're going to do on this photo is the dodge and burn. And so we need to get rid of develop raw because I actually need access to the curves to set this up. So I'm just going to make a slight change to exposure just so that when I close that down, that's gone. That's dropped into our edits menu over here and we're free to come in and set up our dodge and burn effect. And so I want to come into the develop section and we're going to first of all set up our brightening layer, which will be our dodge effect. And the way I'm going to do that is with curves. You could do it through boosting up the exposure like this and then working on this. However, I prefer to do it through curves because what we're able to do is just grab the midtones. And if we boost the midtones up, let's say we're pretty aggressive with brightening this up. What we can also do is just grab the peak of this and bring it down because on the right hand side of the curves that represents our highlights that you can see if I move that up and down. We don't want to overexpose anything if we paint over it to the maximum. And so that's one of the reasons why I really love this effect. We can set this brightening layer up exactly as we want it. If we want to boost up the shadows, we can do that as well. Some people prefer to actually protect the shadows and so they're only dodging in, i.e. brightening up the areas that are already bright. However, that's not the method that I like to do. If I want to brighten something up and I paint it over an area, I also want the shadows to brighten up if that's what I choose. And so with that in mind, I'm going to come up here and I'm actually going to grab the shadow slider and I might just boost that up a little bit as well. So that ability to set that up with those precise refinements, making sure we're not blowing out or overexposing those highlights, that is a big advancement over using a traditional dodge and burn tool. We can do the same thing with the shadows and make sure we're not crushing those down and losing details there as well. So that's one of the main reasons why I really like this approach. And when we get to setting up our burn tool on the next layer, I'm going to explain to you one more reason why this approach is superior to a standard dodge and burn tool. So again, everyone who's saying, we need a dodge and burn tool in Leo, oh, we really don't. This way is superior, this way is better, trust me. Me. give it a go and see what you think okay now we have this set up we just want to jump into the masking again and now we're free to come in with our brush and start painting this effect exactly where we want it so I'm gonna drop this strength down normally you want to be building this pretty subtly but I'm gonna jump straight in with 20% and now where I click and let go we're just gonna start brightening her up and so we can work on the cheeks on the forehead we can work on the bridge of the nose as well and i'm doing this again all with a mouse so it's quite achievable you don't necessarily need a wacom tablet which is my preferred method for actually doing this kind of work but i'm literally doing this with a mouse as i'm chatting to you and as you can see unlike last time where we painted and we just saw the mask this time we see the mask temporarily when we click and paint a line but as soon as we release we see what that's done Let's say we want to brighten her eyes up a little bit. We can just do one pass over the whole eye. And then if we want to bring out more color, we can come down and we can just paint in the circle of her eye here. Let's zoom out again and we can click on the eye tool to see our before and our after, before and after. I've been pretty heavy handed, but you can see exactly what we're able to do. So I might just take a little bit off the forehead there, particularly at the top. If we want to start brightening things up again, we can press X on the keyboard just to jump straight to the paint tool and then I can just click 
and drag and I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard to increase and decrease the size of the brush as I go. Now I'm not going to make this a video about where you should and shouldn't paint, I just want to share with you the techniques. If you guys do want me to actually cover details about where you should be painting on a model, um, you can use this effect on landscapes as well, but literally we could actually do a full skin retouch using this technique, we can re-sculpt her face if we want to, enhance details, we can bring out the eyes, bring out the hair, you can do all sorts of things. For example, in the background, we've just got this little bit of a line where my background cloth was folded for quite a while. We can actually use dodge and burn to remove that, uh, not doing it the way I just did then. Um, that was a terrible bit of mouse work. So don't do that, but look, you can back and forth between your brush and your erase tool just to get the effect you want. Um, basically, what I meant to do was paint on the darker strip there to remove it. Let's say I want to brighten her arm here, I've pressed X on the keyboard again just to switch to paintbrush tool, make the brush a little bigger just by pressing the right bracket key just a couple of times and now I can just paint along that little highlight just helping to enhance that. If we want to give a little form to the hairband here we might just want to brighten up the little bit that would be pointing towards the light. Let's look at our before and our after, it's very crude, very rough and ready but you certainly get the idea of what we can achieve using this dodge effect. Okay, let's do a similar thing to set up the burn. So we're gonna close down the develop tool. That's gonna to drop into our edits if we want to re-access that. But if we open up a brand new tool here, we can now come in and set that up as our burn layer. And so again, I'm gonna come down to the curves tool and I'm gonna grab a point in the middle of the curve and just start bringing that down. Now what I'm gonna do is actually just take this much, much further than I intend to, just to show you what happens to the skin and the dress. Can you see that the saturation of the color is actually intensifying as I drop this down. The same thing actually happens when we over brighten the image as well. We get more saturation in those colors. And for those of you that have moved to Luminar Neo from Luminar AI, may actually recall that if you go too heavy handed with the burn tool in Luminar AI, you'll start to get discoloration. Things are gonna get oversaturated. So by using this method, we can darken things down. And then if things start to get a little oversaturated, we can just grab that saturation slider and just ease that back. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So we'll make sure we're happy with the darkness value of the curve. And then if we feel like the shadows are just getting away on us a little bit and just getting a little bit too dark, we can just lift a point up in the shadow side just a little bit. So we still have a dark representation of the overall photo. And if we look at our before and after, you can definitely see that. However, we still have detail in the very darkest areas like the hair here. But as I said before, the saturation has actually increased. And so what we do is we just come down to the color section and we're just gonna grab the saturation slider and we're gonna to start to pull that out and make sure that it's sort of matching the saturation value that we had in the original photo. And I think minus 16, something like that's pretty good. So here's our before, here's our after, all good. And now we're ready to start painting this in. So I'm gonna to jump to the masking section again, grab my brush, maybe drop the strength down even more to 15 and one click and away I go. So I could just paint down on the left hand side of her face here and there you go, I've darkened that part of her cheek. So you can use dodge and burn to do things like accentuate cheekbones, give her more definition underneath her jaw here if we want to. And just like last time, I like to work a little more heavy handed than I actually intend to finish up with. And that allows me to just sort of go back and forth between applying the effect with the paintbrush and then using the erase tool just to remove it. And so we could paint underneath her bust line here we might want to darken down some of the sleeve, particularly on the left hand side, further away from the light source. We could even come in and just paint the whole side of her face there just to darken that down and give more of that three dimensional form. We're going to darken down the dress at the bottom here and also darken down the area around her tummy as well. There's a basic rule that says that your eye will go to the brightest part of an image. And so if we can use dodge and burn to actually darken down areas that we don't want people to look at, then we can subtly influence a viewer's experience of looking at our photo. Okay, let's have a little look at our before and our after of that, before and after. Like I say, pretty heavy handed. We can come back in with the erase tool if we feel like we've overcooked things, which I normally tend to, especially when I'm doing videos for you guys. It's such a cool technique because what you can do is you can actually work on a very detailed scale and come in and actually do skin retouching if you want to. Dodge and Burn is really flexible and I'd love to talk more to you guys about how to use it to actually improve your portraits. Um, it can also be applied to landscapes as well, but you can come in and you can work 
locally, like very specifically on certain areas. You can use it for skin retouching as well. So for example, if we come up here and we've got this pimple here, we might just want to darken down the top side that's catching the light and that's just going to help to sort of minimize that pimple and then if we scroll out and we increase the size of the brush we can do much broader effects so for example we can come in and we can do a big sweep around the outside and we can start to build up a custom vignette of darkening down that background if we want to we can come in around the eyes and bring the brush size down and we can just get rid of the bags on her eyes by just darkening down the bright parts that are catching the light and then we can close that down now both our dodge and burn have moved into the edits and at some point hopefully luminar is going to allow us to rename these but not at the moment and so we need to remember which order they're in so this one here this is for brightening i can just jump back into that come to my masking brush and start painting that in on the areas that are just a little bit too dark so just underneath the eyes we can get rid of the bags there and yes i know we have ai portrait specific tools in luminar however if we want to take a more refined manual approach we can absolutely do that with this approach let's have a look at our before and our after and i'll toggle between the two and you can notice dodge and burn has helped us do a few things we've done a little bit of three-dimensional modeling we've been able to bring out detail in the hair we've also been able to minimize issues so bags under the eyes we've been able to bring attention say to the chest less attention to the stomach things like that we've given our eyes a bit of pop there is so much that you can do with dodge and burn i really hope these techniques have been useful for you guys if you're someone who prefers to see the mask as a whole as you're working on it i'd go for technique number one one if you're someone who likes to see in real time the strokes and the effect that they're having I'd certainly recommend technique number two my preference is for the second approach thank you so much for watching guys I really appreciate it I hope this has been valuable to you if it has you know the score give me a thumbs up leave me a comment as well let me know what you thought and I look forward to seeing you in the next video another one's just popped up right here so go ahead and click that one and I'll see you over there